It all starts with 21 million euro given by the German government to the opposition in Belarus. Stay tuned. Due to the current international situation, ladies and gentlemen, we need to interrupt our program. Okay, what are we talking about today? Today we talk about 21 million euro, a lot of money given by the German government to the opposition in Belarus in order to fight or remove embattled Lukashenko. This article is from February 2021 and I found it at RT. I know some people might think RT is just Russian propaganda. Oh, but this is Russian propaganda. It's actually not. This is news because we found proof on the official website of our federal foreign office in Germany and a statement here. The headline says, statement by Federal Foreign Minister Heiko Maas. On the occasion of the online conference of solidarity with Belarus. It was a video conference. And here further down it mentions, we have imposed sanctions against Lukashenko and his regime. And we have set up an action plan civil society Belarus with up to 21 million euro stated here and so on and so on. So this is proof it has happened is not plain out of the air Russian propaganda. Back to the article in RT it says Germany has set aside 21 million euro 25.3 million US dollars as part of its new action plan aimed at supporting opponents of the Belarusian government. Foreign Minister Heiko Maas has told an improvised pro-opposition online conference. Seemingly in an effort to cement an image of Berlin as the leader among European nations sponsoring anti-government movements in the post-Soviet space, Maas on Saturday addressed the so-called Belarus Solidary Conference. He said, the genie of democracy is out of the bottle. There's no way to put it back. Berlin's chief diplomat said in a pre-recorded address as he promised millions of euro in support to the Belarusian opposition. Further, it says, the German foreign minister was one of the highest ranking speakers at the forum, which also saw some European Parliament lawmakers and experts participate. The project involves German scholarships for students expelled from Belarusian universities for their protest activ activities, as well as some aid for independent media, independent media, and psychological help to those that endured torture and the at the hands of law enforcement. Berlin is also about to set up a special tracking mechanism to collect evidence about alleged human rights violators in Belarus, Maas said while vowing that. The day will come when they will be held accountable. Further down in the article, it says, Berlin's plans were also confirmed by Chancellor Angela Merkel, who dedicated her last video podcast entirely to expressing support to the Belarusian opposition. The Chancellor slammed last year's elections by saying they were neither democratic nor fair nor transparent. I really wonder how one country far away from another country can make up an opinion about elections there. I haven't heard any comments about the last elections in the US by Russia, by Belarus, by Venezuela, by China. They just don't fucking care. Surprisingly, we always care, especially when it is about countries we would like to change the government. And this is what it's all about. It's about supporting 
I just call it a new color revolution with 21 million euro tax money. It's not out of Heiko Maas pocket. This is fucking taxpayers money. And he's giving that money to people on the streets in Belarus, which is not our business at all. Well, this leads me to my next uh, point. Here at UN.org, Article 2, Paragraph 4, it says, all members shall refrain in their international relations from the threat or use of force against the territorial integrity or political independence of any state or in any other manner inconsistent with the purpose of the United Nations. This is the principle of no interference. And just to give you one more example here on UN.org, uh, press release GA9119. It's about foreign interference main cause of continuing conflict in Afghanistan. Minister tells General Assembly. Foreign interference was the main cause of continued conflict in Afghanistan. The Deputy Foreign Minister of Afghanistan, Abdul Rahim Ghafurzai, told the General Assembly this afternoon as it continued its opening debate. Evidence to support that claim would be duly submitted to the Council. So foreign interference is nothing good. We need peaceful coexistence, we need respect and not ignorance. We don't interfere now in America, even though after the last election 75 million Americans didn't vote for President Biden. What about this? No one cares. No one cares about Mr. Biden being in the chair as president in the United States now. China doesn't care. Russia doesn't care. Venezuela doesn't care. No one cares. Only we care about other countries who's elected and how they are elected. And in addition that we care, we worry about everything, we give money to the people who create unrest, instead of just let them deal with their problems, which is a fundamental agreement in the UN. Anyway, what would happen if China or Russia would support a far right-wing group in Germany? I think hell would break loose in our country here if we would see such an interference here on our doorstep. So this brings us to our next article and this is uh, here in TASS, Russian news agency. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is Russian propaganda. No, it's not because we find the same article here at Deutsche Welle. And here the headline is called Belarus, two men accused of planning coup arrested in Moscow. So let's get back to our other article where the headline says Russian FSB detains two individuals plotting coup in Belarus. Assassination of Lukashenko. The coup was scheduled for May 9th during the Victory Day parade in Minsk. Russia's Federal Security Service said. Yes. In a special operation conducted by the Federal Security Service of the Russian Federation alongside the State Security Committee of the Republic of Belarus, the illegal activities of Yuri Leonidovich Tsiankovich, a dual citizen of the United States and the Republic of Belarus, and the Belarusian citizen Alexander Feduta were prevented, as those had been scheming to stage a military coup in Belarus in accordance with a tried and tested color revolution scenario, with the involvement of local and Ukrainian nationalists, as well as the physical removal of President Alexander Lukashenko. The FSB continued. 
According to proactive information received from the Belarusian partners, in private chats of an internet messenger, the ideologists of radical opposition Tsiankovic and Feduta organized discussion of a plan of armed uprising in Belarus and decided to hold an in-person meeting in Moscow using available measures of secrecy with the opposition-minded generals of the Republic's armed forces. So this is a fact. Just eight weeks after 21 million euro changed hands from Germany to Belarusian opposition, this intended coup was planned for May the 9th. This is a bombshell. This is a bombshell. Not only that we support the opposition in a different country in order to create unrest, um, no one knows where the money went, what they are doing with the money. And this is a fucking shame. In a period where many people in Germany suffer economically, have a really hard time. We have nothing else to do than sending 21 million euro into another country to destabilize that country, to create chaos and who knows, I'm not saying who knows supporting a coup. This has nothing to do with peaceful foreign relations. I really don't know what else to say. If you have any idea or suggestion uh, or opinion what we could have done better with 21 million euro, please drop me a line down in the comment section. I would like to know what you think. That's it for today. If you think this video was helpful, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. That helps the channel grow and is totally free of charge. Otherwise, stay healthy, have a nice weekend and see you in the next video. Bye.